Everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by Mr. Paul Thorod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. How are you? Back home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You made it. You got on your train on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, how was it for you? How was the trip? <laughs> uh, it was tiring. It was quick, though. You know, day trip to New York. Um, but it was good. Um, I got to see you guys. And um, we, you know, I went out to a Lenovo like pre IFA briefing. So it was Lenovo, you know, computers, PC, um, tablets, and so forth, and phones. Actually, they make phones too. And then Motorola as well, which is part of Lenovo. So did they? Uh, it seems like everybody has made their announcements before IFA. Yeah, it seems like the thing to do. Was that what this was? It was a, hey, this is what we're going to unveil in a couple of days. Yeah, that what they were doing was specifically because a lot of people can't go to Berlin for a show like this. Um, it, it's sort of like the CES of Europe, or it has evolved into it. And so they just did it for U.S. press so they could have a a peek at what was going to happen. Because everybody seemed to. Samsung had a big announcement. Motorola had a big announcement. Lenovo, Asus, yeah, Acer. Acer. Yeah. Um, every, I mean, almost every single PC manufacturer and, and almost, a, you know, phone manufacturers also are yeah, now doing this. usually is, you know, because so many devices come out for the holiday season, IFA has turned into the kind, you know, what I always thought CES should be, which is something right before the holiday season, not something nine months before the holiday season. I, it, it's bizarre, right? Like the, these events, the purpose of these events were the, for the companies to make their own big unveiling and that's why they attend them. Right. Uh, now it's just being there. Is the purpose for these companies? There's no unveiling really is, is happening. Everything is announced, you know, well, right before. I, you know, it's it's evolved. It's a weird show. But, um, you know, like Microsoft, for example, will have a keynote address tomorrow. And I think, honestly, it's more about their partner products, you know, the PCs and devices that other companies uh, are releasing this fall, some of which have already been announced, you know, but just put them all together in one show and kind of, show how those things collectively are a really healthy market. Uh, I don't. I was told explicitly that Microsoft wouldn't be announcing anything at that show, but um, obviously that could have changed in the, you know, the month since I was told that. But sure. Um, you want so what did you see at the Lenovo event? Because we we I mean we discussed this over lunch, but uh, yeah, yeah. it was interesting. I mean we, <laughs> Mary Jo, you and myself, we did a show. For about four yeah, hours for ourselves, but for the woman who worked in the restaurant, yeah, I mean that that's pretty much what we did. And then we went to Rattle and Hum, and then we did a show there too. Yeah, um, yeah. What was for the, the most surly of... bar maidens? Yeah, <laughs> which I want to talk about on the post show. That whole mm -hmm. thing that's happening okay. there. It's it's actually awesome. Um, the big story is from I guess I don't know if it was like the best product that they announced or the star, but I, in my opinion, it was a star. Is that Surface clone? It's yeah. It's certainly the most interesting um, for many reasons, not just for a product reasoning but reason, right. but for the fact that they have cloned the Surface, which Microsoft is a partner. If people don't it's remember. A weird. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, most of the PC products that they announced aren't coming out for a couple of months, and so I, I mean, I'll get these things for review, so I'll eventually have them. We can find out for sure, but. Um, yeah, they announced something called a Mix 700, like M-I-I-X, uh, meaning it's not a ThinkPad. It, it, it's probably what would have or maybe really is branded as an IdeaPad device, right? It looks almost identical to a Surface 3 or a Surface Pro 3. And by almost identical, I mean the form factor is almost identical, the screen size, the kickstand, the clip-on keyboard cover. It looks, with it, the, looks like a, it looks like a Surface. Yeah. And, and even to the tune of... You know, with the Surface 3 and Surface Pro 3, you can push the keyboard up against the bottom of the tablet and create like kind of a an angled typing surface. Um, that device, use, you know, has the same mechanism. I mean, it's exactly the same. Um, it's Core M based, and so it kind of slices the difference between the Atom. I think it's now, X7. I don't know. If now that's there's right multiple brand. models. I mean, starting is what six ninety nine. So is and what does it go up to? I think they're. I, I'm, I think they're all Core M. I, ah, I think okay. it's. You know, they have a new um, naming scheme, right? So the, the Core M 
products now are lowercase m and they're like sort of core i you know we have three five and seven and core m it's m3 m5 m7 so i they they explicitly said m3 and m7 i don't know if that means all three will be available but there will be a range of core m processors and i don't know if it's fanless um you know we'll see but it looked you know like, like i said identical form factor um two usb ports not one which is kind of a nice thing two full size usb ports usb3 uh, one of each i think i think okay. it's i think I, i'm gonna i'm i could be mixing up things in my head but i think it's one of each one two one three um what else is going on with this thing? If you're familiar with the Le uh, Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro or Pro 3, however that's named, it has what they call, the latest rendition of it has what they call a watch band hinge. It looks, uh, it looks I, it's, it's cool. Like a metal kind of watch band kind of looking thing. Um, the hinges on this thing are like that, uh, look like that, which, you know, is good or bad, depending on how you feel about those things. And it has a, key, like, I don't want to call it a, a ThinkPad keyboard, but a ThinkPad style keyboard it's so, super low profile okay um, so i i did some homework on this on this keyboard mm -hmm. on this keypad because that was that was one of the the main things that we were talking about was the keypad and how you know surface really dropped the ball in my opinion i don't, I don't know if you think the same but they, they really dropped the ball when it came to the keypad on the surface especially the surface pro they should have had a, a multitude of keypads they should have had right. vendors signing up they should have had agreements i, I mean yeah. there, there's so much that they could have done with this but they I didn't. I thought that's where this was going. I mean, they announced yeah. that Blade program. I thought that was going to happen. We'd have third-party keyboards. It'd be so great. Yeah, and to be honest, I think a lot more, especially with the Pro line, considering that's the 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 business user, the enterprise user that's they're kind of targeting with that. Right. Um, you would imagine that the key the keypad keypad is you know top notch, but it's not. You know, it's a little better than the crappy one you could get, but it is <laughs> what it is right now. Uh, sure. The keypad okay. on the, the Lenovo, it is the IdeaPad keypad and not the ThinkPad keypad. Uh, you keep saying keypad, but you mean uh, keyboard. Keyboard, I'm sorry, keyboard. And I, I, I think the, I, I, you, I'm sure you're going to defend this with some rationale, but I, okay. I think you're missing the point a little okay. bit. And, and what I mean is I don't think it matters because Lenovo makes different types of keyboards that have different you know, uh, key shapes and sizes and, and key press depths and so forth. And as machines have gotten thinner, if you think about a machine like the uh, uh, X1 Carbon, which is a ThinkPad, or the Lenovo um, Yoga Pro 3, whatever that's called, which is an idea pad essentially, um, they have a lower profile type key. And one of the big things that they're kind of proud of, and for good reason, is they were able to kind of keep the vaunted ThinkPad feel to these thinner kind of keyboards. But the keyboard that's on the, the type cover, if, if you will, for the uh, Mix 700, it looks like a Lenovo slash ThinkPad keyboard, but the the key the keys are so thin. Um, it's it's much closer to a type cover for a Surface than it is to any ThinkPad or yeah. Lenovo, whatever. Yeah. So I don't I honestly don't think it matters. I I think the big aside from the quality of the keyboard itself, which we'll have to see what that is. I think the big deal there is that the track. Well, it's not even a big deal, but the bigger deal maybe is that the trackpad. It looks like it's bigger and nicer than the one that comes with Surface. I think the keyboard is going to be slightly compromised no matter what. Did you have a chance to type on it? Just you know, slightly, kinda, yeah. You know. And and how, how how was it for you? I mean, I didn't that... think it was particularly fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And that's the thing. Like you know, in their pictures, it looks like it's a little bit more of a real keyboard. It, than it looks it exactly is. like the IdeaPad keypad, but it's not. Keyboard. It really isn't. And um, it, and it, I don't. You know, somewhere there will be some technical specs where you'll see the key throw on this thing. I bet it's one third or one half of what it is on an IdeaPad. I wonder if something like this is going to encourage Microsoft to kind of reach out to you know, Belkin or Logitech or some of these other companies right. to start well, I, making I mean, accessories. So sometime in the next 30 days-ish, you know, Microsoft will have some hardware event at which they announce Surface something something, and we'll see what that is. Um, I would hope at that point they talk about this, you know, because I, I, what I, I mean, now that Lenovo makes one, I guess it doesn't matter anymore, but I always sort of imagined, you know, um, Lenovo could make a keyboard that clipped onto the yeah. Surface, and it would be a little thicker, but so too was that, remember they had that power keyboard that had a battery on it, battery in it, and that thing was thicker obviously, because there was a battery. Um, I would take like a Lenovo slash ThinkPad external keyboard. If you could clip that thing on and carry that as a unit, I'd be so happy to have a full-size Lenovo keyboard on that thing, even if it was bigger than 
you know, uh, dimension wise than yeah. the surface itself. Now, of course, Lenovo makes their own surface, so I don't think we're ever going to see that. So it's a Core M. Um, I honestly thought it was going to start at a Core M and it would go up to, you know, whatever. But I guess they're doing it for fan reasons, right? Because the Core M's, you don't need a fan, but if you put an i7 it's, in so, that thing. You know, it's hard to say. It, um, I think one of the identity problems they have at Lenovo is, you know, when do you brand something, a ThinkPad, an IdeaPad, a, a Lenovo, you know? And this device, to me, I looked at it because it was black too, right? I mean, and they have yeah. gray ThinkPads now. I mean, I, these things don't really matter anymore. They have but a silver ThinkPad now. Which yeah, you know what I mean? I just, I think that's kind of wrong it is, Thank you. You know, I had this yeah. discussion with someone about the color of the thing. Yeah. And they, they wrote to me, they go, oh, you're going to, you're going to talk, you know, crap about the color. It's, 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 you know, like a metal gray and not a black. I'm like, yes, you know what? A ThinkPad should be black. Should be black. Yeah, I agree. And I want the keys this thick. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted well, to make a ka-ching <laughs> sound every okay time I job on, on the keyboard. But the, it, I, from afar, this looked like a ThinkPad to me. And as I got close to it, it was like, okay, wait, this is not, this is brand, mixed, the mixed branding, that's a consumer brand. I mean, so I think what they're going after there, obviously, are home users, but also potentially younger students, that kind of thing. Um, and, and, you know, some professionals will buy it. But I guess it's, uh, you know, if you compare it to Surface, you might say, more of a Surface 3 customer than a Surface Pro 3 customer, you know, uh, that maybe next year we'll see a ThinkPad version of it. Because they did that with Yoga. Remember, there was yeah. Yoga was IdeaPad, and then now there are ThinkPad Yogas. In fact, they announced two new ones um, at the show. So maybe, you know, maybe the bigger screen detachable ThinkPad will, will have this branding. I don't know what they'll call it. Uh, or I'm making it up, so I don't even know if it will exist. But, I mean, you know, maybe that happens too. Because, you know, a 12-inch, 12, I think a 12 or 12.5-inch screen. Um, a little small, you know, surface size. Yeah, you know, I would love it to be like 13 inches, 14 inches, you know, kind of make it the size of an actual laptop instead of the 12 and a half. Yeah, I keep looking for something like that. You know, I saw a uh, a story today that was about, a, it was about a Toshiba device. It's a detachable, so many of these things now, you know, the screen clips off of the keyboard and I misread it as 14-inch detachable. What it was really saying was something like Toshiba announces 14 new devices or whatever. And, um, it, of course, this thing was just an, yet another 11 or 12-inch device. And, um, you know, I would like something like that. I'd be okay with that. I, you know, um, I tend to go for the bigger devices, you know, if I can. Yeah, it, uh, you know what's surprising to me? That it's taken this long for the OEMs to come up with, you know, what Microsoft had envisioned for Windows 8 laptops to be you know, and Windows you know. 10 laptops to be. It, it's really been a struggle. And if we think about this, it's only been three years, right, that the, this form factor has really become yeah. not a necessity, but a desirable option for people. You know, convertible laptops, it, it didn't really matter unless you were a doctor with Windows 7. You could have all the convertible laptops yeah, in the world. I mean, Nobody was buying it because it was essentially useless. You were going to have a little <laughs> pen like this and a clipboard right. uh, and put it in like in a clipboard mode and, and do stuff. But with 8 and 10, it makes more sense to have this. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think with Windows 8 in particular, aside from just the resistance from the PC maker community, there was this sense of feeling out, you know, what, what will, what do users want? Like, what are they going to rally around? Like we'll throw out a couple of different device types, like which one will actually take off the market. And, um, I think the convertible thing, which has really been around since the early days of tablet PC, you know, go back to 2002, 2003. Um, you know, I, I think there's some market for that. I mean, obviously when you have something that is basically a laptop and you're swiveling the screen around and reversing it somehow over itself and writing on it with a pen, um, you're talking, about a device that's going to be a little bit heavy and big and bulky, you know, to use as a tablet. And so in that scenario, you're, you're talking about something that is a laptop that very occasionally you will use as, as a tablet. Yeah. And, and maybe there's a market for that. I think that the surface type devices, detachables, two in ones, whatever you want to call that. Um, I think there's probably a bigger market for that because there's a healthy market for tablets and there's the ability to turn this thing into an actual PC, I think is really valuable to people. So it's kind of entertainment and productivity, and it's just at the click of a keyboard. To kind know? of play the other side of the argument, I think a lot of this also relies on the chipsets that, yeah, yeah, are, and and the advancement yep. of Intel's chipset and their, their video line. Oh, their, dude, and when, their, their, when the their first CPUs. tablet PC came out, uh, they had something I think it was called uh, uh, Pentium 
M, I think it was called. And it was, uh, it was awful. And those machines would get two to three hours of battery life. And that's what killed it. It was just, it was kind of a neat idea, but you would get the fan hiss and everything and they'd run hot and the battery life would be terrible. And it just didn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, it, Skylake, as I like to call it, Skylark, uh, the Skylark <laughs> yep. processor the by Buick Intel. Skylake the Buick processor. Sky- yeah, with uh, with Eddie, the Be- Eddie Bauer edition is the one that you got to go with. <laughs> by the way, uh, yep. no, the the Skylake processor. It was processors. like the Oldsmobile Mega better. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Intel, you know, they you know spoke about this the other day, and and you have it on your website actually. If you go to therot.com, it's actually on petri.com, right? Uh, which one is uh, the Skylake, the Skylake article? Skylake article. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, which you could get it on Thorot.com. So you're linking there. But uh, yeah. you go into detail about the changes to what Intel is doing and how they're advancing the CPU. And a lot of this seems like it's targeting the two in ones. Yeah. Um, uh, mobile. Right. It's it's concentrating around mobile because they're going to give you a tremendous amount of battery life, from what I've read, compared to prior generations. Um, and yeah. their entire line has been redone. Uh, do you want to go into this a little bit? Because this is interesting to me that it's not what they had promised originally about a year ago, but <laughs> well, it's getting well, there. I, I think what's happening here is if you were, if you com- you know how Intel has kind of a TikTok kind of time frame thing. You know, they have big releases, small releases, big releases, small releases. Uh, Microsoft uh, did this for a brief while with server. You know, they release a big server release and a small server release. Um, this is the first time we've seen a second small release in a row, I think, and it's really not a big improvement over the previous gen. But the problem is the previous gen was being sold with Windows 8.1, and there weren't really a lot of PCs going out the door. And so I think the theory here is that instead of comparing it to the previous version, what we're going to do is compare it to, well, I guess two things. First, we're going to compare it to the one-third of the market, 500 million PCs that are five years old, and there are dramatic differences there. And that's what the the numbers you're seeing are all related to, They're not to previous gen, but to, you know, maybe two gens previous or three gens previous. I mean, it's quite impressive when um, you look at those numbers. Yeah, but the other thing that's happened that's been very interesting is that, you know, Intel has really expanded their um, CPU product line, right? We've, for a long time, we've had things like, uh, you know, Pentium type processors for the desktop and then Pentium M's, like I said, you know, for mobile computers. We had Xeon has been around for a long time for workstations and for servers. And over the years, these things have really expanded out, right? And so, uh, obviously, we went through the core, the core two duo. It was like, remember there was a core two solo at one time was like a single core version of it. Um, core two quad. A lot of people forget about that. And then we went into you know what we now think of as these, the core i chipset, which has been around for now the sixth generation, core i three, core i five, core i six, um, and they've expanded beyond that as well. Um, they have the core M, which is brand new. They've had Atom for a long time. Atom was kind of like Celeron, you know, kind of their really crappy low on, low end kind of uh, chip supposedly in the most recent uh, generation of this which um, I, I don't know that it's been updated for Skylake yet but let's say the previous gen the one that ships in surface 3 is actually a pretty decent chip and so you have uh, different chips that are um, you know kind of tailored for different kinds of devices we're gonna see we actually have already seen but we will see on the Microsoft side hopefully sometime next year uh, atom based phones you know um, and uh, Atom-based, very small tablets. Actually, we do see those today. Um, and, uh, you know, Core M is becoming something that is uh, kind of a nice compromise between Atom on the low end and the Core I chipsets on the high end in that it is a lot of the power that you get with Core I, but the battery life and the power management functionality you get with Atom. So it's kind of an interesting compromise. And uh, Intel has all these numbers, you know, for how much better the battery is, how much better the... Pro, you know, the uh, processing powers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, I mean, I think ultimately what we're talking about here is just uh, making special versions of these chips that are tailored for special markets. And it's like everything. It's like mobile gaming market. They have a special chip for that, you know, that, that supports overclocking, you know, stuff like that. Um, they have supporting chipsets that support USB-C, uh, USB Type-C with, um, you know, Thunderbolt 3 and the Intel RealSense cameras and Y-Die and Pro Y-Die, which is brand new, um, and all kinds of other stuff. And so it's... It's interesting, you know, Intel has always been kind of the the backbone of the industry. Um, I think people have, and, and their PC purchases have tend to lag behind a little bit uh, to what Intel is doing in the sense that a new Intel release doesn't necessarily generate a bunch of people running it down to the stores. But I think this thing happening at the same time as Windows 10 
is kind of interesting because it gives, it's a real opportunity. A, they did work together to make sure these things work well together, but I mean, they kind of always do that. Um, but there are a lot of PCs in the market, like I said, that haven't been upgraded for five years. And so this is an opportunity for everybody to sell their computers and, um, and, to, and to see real value when you do so. In other words, you get this computer that's just inherently it's going to be thinner, lighter, smaller, whatever, you know, less fan or no fan, awesome battery life, um, processing power through the roof compared to what you have. But on the software side, you also have this new version of Windows that has stuff that in it that can take advantage of stuff that comes on the chipset. Um, the audio capabilities like Hey Cortana, uh, Windows Hello stuff with fingerprint readers or with real sense 3D cameras. Also, Windows um, 10 is know. doing better battery, battery management yep, also. Yep. So it, it, it understands what it's doing rather than just relying on the hardware. It's just all that stuff together. Yeah. You know? I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the article you posted. Uh, it, you know, Intel's claiming that it's two and a half times better in performance, triple the battery life and graphics uh, that are 30 times better than most typical five-year-old laptops. To, which, to be clear, we're talking about Intel, you know, integrated graphics, right? Yeah. Which, you know, five years ago, so it's uh, 2010. What, 4, that's Windows 7. So they, they were they were okay. I mean, remember when uh, Vista came out, a lot of the computers that were in the market at that time had the in, the first generation of Intel integrated graphics it was so terrible, uh, they couldn't even run uh, Arrow. You know, you couldn't get the glass effects. Yeah, I, I mean, it wasn't five years ago. It wasn't great, but it was still... Yeah, and obviously it was. And an today the integrated right? graphics are, 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 you know, for most users, unless you're a gamer, right? No, are probably fine. More than enough. You can play yeah. 4K video. You're good. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. You know, I have a friend that bought a gaming laptop recently, uh, a newer gaming laptop. Yeah. And, which one did he get? Uh, I, I, I can't remember which one. Uh, yeah, I'll message him. I'll ping him, and I'll ask him. He actually had to return it because the battery life was so atrocious on it. Because it was running an i7 in there, but it wasn't like a mobile version. It was like one of those big, thick ones, you know, uh, the, the laptop. Uh, he had to take it back, and he returned it. It would, it would give him like two hours of battery life at most if it was just in like just working. So, you know, you have to decide what you're going to do on this thing. Even, till, right. even now, even with this, you know, unbelievable chip that they're putting out, uh, it's, you're still not going to get the performance out of the battery when you're starting to play games or do anything that's, you know, graphics intensive. Yeah, I mean, there's not much you can do about that. Or CPU I, I, intensive. Know, yeah, no one's going to go to a, a gaming event with their laptop and not bring a power supply. <laughs> I mean, those things are still going to get, you know. With, with, um, with Intel getting into the mobile field, right, with, um, with like, chips for phones and tablets... I, I'm I'm interested to see what my, what Microsoft does with this, with possible you know future Lenovo's, uh, um, future Lenovo's. I'm sorry, future uh, Lumias. I'm reading <laughs> Lenovo on on yeah, my screen yeah. as I'm as I'm saying it. Um, you know, we've heard the rumors about the Surface Phone, which who knows, but the rumor is that they're going to use Intel on that. Yep, that's what I've heard. Yeah, um, is that a positive? I mean, how does that how does that impact? Microsoft and Intel in the sense that for Microsoft, now they're going to be separating kind of their Lumia line and the Surface line for phones, right? Is that the goal where the Lumias are not going to be the flagships well, I, and the Surface is going to be the flagship? I, I'd have to. I can't. I mean, yeah. who knows? I, I don't yeah. really know that that's ever going to happen. And I think things change. You know, when Microsoft announced their big reshuffling of Windows Phone back in whenever that was, June or July or whatever, that kind of awful event, you know, a lot of people who kind of defend Windows Phone on the one hand are like, oh, now everything's going to be different. This is going to work. It's going to make sense and everything. And it's like, guys, you know, th they made this huge decision after one disastrous year. I mean, when this next year is no better, what makes you think they're not going to change again? You know, so I think that everything is in play when it comes to phones at Microsoft. I, I don't think they're just going to wake up, you know, July 2016 and say, you know what? It didn't work. We're out. Yeah. Um, I don't but, think you know they things can. could change. I don't think so they I can't. Can I don't point. know. You know, I don't know. A lot of people it, feel that that's what's going to happen. Uh, and you know, I, I was I get I got a message from a guy, and he's like, "Well, they did it with the Zoom." I'm like, "The Zoom was dead the moment it started," and <laughs> yeah, sure. Zoom was its own platform. Windows Phone is Windows, so for them, they they benefit from having Windows Phone out there. They benefit in the sense that, oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, they? yeah, do they? Yeah, that's a good. Point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess the, I guess to flip this on its um, on its head, I guess I would say 
Windows Phone as a platform benefits because it's Windows, so Microsoft would be less likely to just fold it up and walk away, right? <laughs> because it's Windows, it's important. You know, it's um, like a, when a, when an MP3 player doesn't take off, it's like, well, lesson learned. You know, there's a billion dollars yeah. down the line of whatever we did. Um, you know, it's a different thing. So, I don't know. I, I listen. I feel like if they were going to bail on on the phone, they would have bailed yeah. with Windows Mobile. No, well, think, uh, think of how well, many years they've had a mobile platform. Yeah, but you know the market was so much smaller then. I, it was, but people are acting like they're new to the market. You know, they're the last one into the market. No, they they've been in the market for a long yeah, no, time. They, right, right. But you know, I, the iPhone really did touch off what I would call the modern smartphone market. You know, I, I, there were smartphones before that, but come on. I mean, uh, the iPhone is the dividing line. And in the in the iPhone world, uh, Windows has not done well. So the problem is the stakes are higher. The market is bigger. That market is much bigger than the market for PCs. It's much bigger than any market that Microsoft competes in. And, you know, they want a piece of that. And so obviously, um, you know, mobile software, they can get that services and apps and everything. That's fine. But, you know, they'd love to have a big platform there. And it, it's just... I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it's happening, you know? So I don't know. I don't, like, I don't I, think I, it's going to happen. I, I mean, I really don't see them becoming a major player in this, but I do see them. Well, okay. <sighs> I, I guess, I, I don't know. Who knows, this, right? I mean, I, this goes I, back to last week's conversation. What are they doing yeah. that that's enticing people to switch platforms? Yeah, and Continuum is interesting to a very small group of people, but... Is that a big enough audience to put this thing over the top? And I don't I yeah. actually believe so. But I think if more I people guess, knew about it, I don't think people are aware that they can do that. Well, it's they can't. Yeah, yeah, they can't yet. But um, so, I guess I, I think if I understand Microsoft's goals here, it is to uh, it. There is an understanding that this thing will be smaller, meaning the platform. You know, it's gonna. It's not, today. It's two point something percent. It's very small. Um, if that two point whatever percent was small but was turning a profit, would it make sense for Microsoft to keep doing it? I, you know, arguably yes. Um, if they could ever get the market share of like a Mac, like a Mac has about seven percent market share worldwide right now. You know, what if Windows Phone had, um, you know, seven percent market share? That would be incredible. But if you had asked me this question, you know, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, you know, what does it mean? Like, what does success mean for Windows Ten, Windows Phone rather? I would have told you and and did tell whoever asked at the time. Uh, it has to be double digit market share. Yeah, has to be. You know, and um, I mean ten percent or more. It has to be. And uh, anything else is just a it's a niche, and they are. I mean, they're just losing market share. <laughs> it's going down. So I don't. I just don't see how this thing is ever going to be successful. What's their What's their global market share right now? Windows Phone. Yeah, I think I think it's like two point six percent. Two point six. There are places in Europe where it, it actually is double digit. By the way, close to double digit. Eight, yeah. nine, 11, ten, eleven, somewhere in there. Uh, United States is probably less than two percent. Very rare to see Windows Phone in the United States. I mean, States. what was it? India? Uh, they have a pretty good market share. India, um, I think it's okay. China is a disaster, and you know, um, there's a lot of these little pat sayings we have, like "Don't start a land war in Asia," you know. Um, one of them is, you know, you can survive not being popular in the United States and you can survive not being popular in China, but you can't not be popular in both. Yeah. And, uh, that's, they're not popular in either one of those. Those are the two biggest smartphone markets in the world and combined, uh, are the majority. I mean, this, this, this goes back again to what we've said. I mean, maybe the market has matured to the point that you, it is going to be virtually impossible for anybody to come in and get 10% double digit market share. Unless you're Android and iOS, yeah. I mean, I I, I really cannot see how the, Microsoft will be able to pull that off. I could see five percent. I could see six percent. Right. So um, we didn't intend to talk about this, but I mean, I think one thing that might be worth broaching briefly is the frustration I expressed to you when I met you on Tuesday. A lot of people. Which was a lot that, of people express frustration when they meet me, Paul. <laughs> About my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, which was that I had to walk, I don't know, two or three blocks, not a big deal. But um, when you don't know where you're going, you know, that is a big deal. And so, of course, I pull up my Lumia and I'm using here maps in New York City to try to find a, 
an address and get to where we're going. But the first thing I have to do is find out where we're going. Yeah. And the answer to oh that question God, yeah. was an email. <laughs> and uh, Windows Phone email app cannot search on the server to save its life, especially if you're using like a Google Gmail type account, which I am. And uh, it, is in, it, it is an incredible frustration uh, to have it turn up nothing when you're searching for something very basic. So I used the web app instead, found the name of the restaurant, plugged it into here maps, and then proceeded to stare at a blank screen with a couple of little geographical features plugged in every once in a while. Absolutely worthless. I'm just absolutely worthless. And eventually I just dug, I took, you know, I had the iPhone in the bag. I just dug it out. Oh, um, no. Gmail app, found that thing two seconds. Plus, you know, click, tapped on it, Google Maps, open up, done. How amazing is that? Yep. And, you know, people always talk about, you know, this is what's wrong with Windows Phone, you know, apps. It doesn't have this app. It doesn't have this app. And you know what? I, there's a conversation to be had there. Um, I don't really have this problem. I don't. Most of the apps I use, I don't, you know, uh, I don't really care one way or the other. You're Although not, I you're just not described two, two instances not, yeah. in which that's not the case. Yeah. Um, this very basic functionality, you know, does not work. If anyone who's used Here Maps, you know, or Here Drive or whatever, knows that the uh, live traffic updating is a joke. Although I actually did just get but a lot. Better isn't it? Than isn't it Bing Maps? Are, I mean, aren't they using Bing? Well, no. Well, Lumia has used the Here stuff. Yeah, but the, the Here stuff is now. Is, isn't it tapping into Bing Maps? No, it's the other way around. Bing Maps is tapping into Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. I mean, if you have a different Windows phone or, or, or Lumia, you can still run the Maps app, which is Bing Apps, uh, Bing Maps, rather. Um, but why would you ever do that? It's, it's even worse than the one that here makes or Nokia or whatever they are today. Um, if you're out in the world, if you're driving around, I mean, it's wonderful that you can download maps offline, you know. But it, the ability of this thing to re respond when stuff is happening in the real world is non-existent. And... That's where the Google stuff really shines, you know, and it's, you may hate Google all you want. I don't care, but Google Maps works. <laughs> and, and it works the best. I, I don't yeah, know anybody it else. It works the best. There is yeah. Google Maps and then there's nothing else. Yeah. The, the, everything else doesn't matter. Well, and, if, you want, uh, if you want a good comparison, uh, where's MapQuest now? <laughs> yep. You know, it, it's, it's gone. I, it's, I don't know anybody. It's out with Alta Vista. Yeah, let me see what happens when I go to MapQuest. MapQuest. MapQuest is where you go when you want to print out a map on paper. It's <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what? It could not be awful. Is it awful? What map quest? I wonder how bad it is now. Map quest in 10 years. I have no idea. I'm on their website. It looks like it's from 10 years ago. Does it really still exist? Yeah, it does exist. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, look, they got a print button there right on top. Yeah, I think that's what most people do. Yeah, it's a free app. Anyway, um, I love Windows Phone. I mean, I love Windows Phone. I love the UI. I love. I just really enjoy using it. And every time I do have to use an iPhone or an Android, aside from feeling the need to genuflect a little bit, I'm really frustrated by how crappy the interface is. And, um, you know, but they have all the apps and the apps actually work. And I, you know, I think ultimately this is the problem. And so, you know, when I, I sort of nebulously say, you know, I love Windows Phone and I do, there's no doubt about it. But my God, is it is it lacking in, su in such obvious and key ways and, and foundational ways, fundamental ways? I mean, you know, do they continue this thing? Uh, you know, I don't know, but they keep starting over again. You know, Windows yeah. uh, Phone Seven became Windows Phone Eight, became Windows Ten Mobile, and these are di actually different platforms. You know, and a lot of the apps they just like start over again. You know, like the Bing Maps app thing you were talking about. It's a brand new app in Windows Ten. Um, it's not like they've been kind of you know updating it as go. That yeah. you know they drop features and stuff. The Mail app doesn't have some really basic features that used to exist in the old version of the Mail app including the ability to do things like link inboxes, you know, uh, really basic stuff. And it's, that's, there's no way to say, you know, it's just frustrating. Okay, so I have a question for you. And I've asked yeah. you this before, but I don't know if anything has changed when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. When we talk about, you know, the whole thing about Windows Phone was integration. It was integrated in the OS initially, right? That That's what they were yeah. selling it as. Look, everything looks the same. Everything has the same form factor. It doesn't feel like you're downloading. You know, everything doesn't look different. Yeah. Um, kind of like iOS, because iOS apps for a while had a very 
unique look compared yeah, to that's, Android. I think now, that was only because people were figuring out iOS. Yeah. But, okay. But, yeah. but right now, everything looks the same. All across every platform, everything is kind of the same, and app developers are having a unified look amongst you know all their platforms okay. that they're developing for. Um, but certain little things is enough to keep someone on a platform. iMessage, yeah. for example, is yeah. a tremendous tool for people that want to be able to send text messages to their friends, to their iPhone friends, people that want to use iMessage to each other. You could put, mm -hmm. you know, it, they have their own chat service, essentially. And it makes it very easy to communicate with other iOS users and other uh, Mac users. Microsoft has Skype, but it has yet to be implemented in that way, right? Uh, yes. So I, I guess that is coming in the Windows 10 time frame. But, but um, Skype should be installed automatically. And when you listen. sign up, it should be there. Uh, okay. And so, you should be able to do SMS and it'll know who you are. And this is your, your, your chat service. So, um, well, you may have heard the notion that Windows 10, you know, a little controversial in some ways because of, uh, um, you know, privacy problems, supposedly and all that stuff. All that stuff, all that stuff is bullshit. It's yeah. all bullshit. But the one thing that is absolutely true is that Windows 7, uh, Windows 10, sorry, uh, is not complete. And it's not because we're always going to update it. It's because the thing they meant to ship as Windows 10 won't be ready till October, November. And that thing you're describing is one of the things that will be happening but is not in that initial release. So it is happening. I assume it's happening in time for you know, Windows 10 Mobile, right, and Windows Phones. But if you run Windows 10 today, you don't have that. So you're right. I, why isn't that there? They ran out of time. So is it is is Skype going to be the de facto chat service for text yeah. and SMS? Oddly enough, though, what they're doing, they will always be a Skype app, but they're actually going to break the Skype functionality out and put it into all the apps in Windows 10 where it makes sense. You know, so you'll be able to do uh, from the messages app or whatever it's called. We'll be able to do Skype chats, Skype video chats, all that stuff. Won't be branded as Skype. I mean, maybe there'll be a little Skype logo on the side or something. Yeah. But it's not going to be Skype. It's going to be, you know, messages because that's what you sort of expect to see on a phone. I, I yeah, I know. I, 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 know. <laughs> it, it, it's, I know. They have this unbelievable tool and they're not implementing it in the way that it should be implemented. And Apple didn't have the tool, and, and and I'm telling you, that's one of the reasons why I'm on I, iMail, why I'm using a Mac right now. It, right. it, it sounds stupid, but no, I, no, that's the, the term you're looking for. In, in some ways, is like sticky. You know, the, those things make that platform sticky, and they keep you there. Um, I, I I love Windows 10. You know, I think Windows 10 is great. I think a lot of the supporting services that are around it, OneDrive, um, yeah. Skype in particular. Um, groove and the TV and movie thing. They're phenomenal tools. They're great. But but the, the the apps are great, but the underlying services are not necessarily where they need to be. Yeah. You know? And when you think about, like, um, I wish I could remember. Someone on uh, Twitter said this to me months ago, and, it, and I sort of pondered it. I, I think I retweeted it, and I thought, you know, there might be something to this, and it, it went something like this. If you're going to spend money on an online service, you should do it with a company that only does that thing. You know, That's in other words, okay. Microsoft is trying to do all this stuff. They have music, they've got TV shows and movies, they've got communications, they've got online story like cloud storage. Um, they have office productivity, obviously. They're kind of all over the map. But uh, isn't know? that everybody now? Google? No, Apple? no, no, no. Well, Google. Okay, maybe they're not everybody. In other words, I, but the point is, yeah, you could get online storage from Google. But what you should do. And I'm not actually, I'm not literally saying this is what you should do. This is a kind of an open question. The theory here is what you should be doing is getting your online storage from Dropbox or Box or one of those companies. You should be getting your online music from Spotify. You should be getting your, like doing your note taking in Evernote, you know, or whatever. Because these, granted, all of these companies probably have expanded out in some small way. But the core competency is doing this one thing. And that, yes, you could go to some big generic factory where they pump out a bunch of stuff. And there are certain um, advantages of scale because Microsoft and Google, et cetera, can afford to you know, build these data centers and have all the storage and everything that you need. But there, there's something interesting to it. And I, I, yeah. I have to say, over, over the intervening months, I have found myself being pushed more and more towards non-Microsoft solutions 
in these categories yeah. because of the lacking and that's nature not good. of the services. Yeah. Like I, OneDrive was so great when they had placeholder files in Windows 8.1. And they don't have but that. But now anymore. that they don't, there's no advantage. And if there's no advantage like that, why, why are you going to use Why it? would I put up with all the sync problems? Why not just use something like Dropbox, which, yeah. by the way, just works? You know? Well, I, I, you know, when, when, when OneDrive announced, you know, they were putting those placeholder files, it was really exciting for me because that's something that I've complained about. And that's an issue with Dropbox for me that you don't have the placeholders. You actually have the files. So yeah. I don't I want to sync to an account. I want to I want a folder to sync, but I want to be able to say, you know what, this folder I want the placeholders to show. This one I want to be able to sync everything. Well, so uh, Dropbox doesn't do that. Dropbox does will, not do that. No. Yeah, they'll let you pick the folders though. You yeah, you, you could pick the folders, but if you connect, like on my Mac, but, I could connect. But here's it. the thing. So I guess, look, I mean, I have some crazy amount of stuff up in OneDrive. Um, but as far as, like, for example, I put my books are in um, are in Dropbox now. I took them out of OneDrive, so my books are in Dropbox. Is we're talking about a very finite amount of storage here, so it makes sense. And I don't know how I could look it up if you want to know how much it is. But what this is the type of thing like I can sync this to all, any PC that I put Dropbox on. I just sync the whole thing. It's probably five gigabytes or whatever. Um, my OneDrive storage is is, a, is one point something terabytes. That's not going to sync down to all of my computers, and so it kind of forces you to think about things a little differently. But I think the the bigger point is that most people don't have that much stuff in cloud storage. It doesn't matter, other than maybe photos, um, and you don't necessarily want every single one of your photos to sync down your computer anyway. So yeah, um, what you really want is an app that can connect to that stuff and use it on the back end. You know, and the Photos app can do that in Windows 10, um, or you could use a service like, uh, you know, Google Music. Uh, go sorry, Google Photos or whatever. I, you know, right uh, now they have what five percent. Microsoft actually announced it that they have five percent of the market. Uh, well, yeah, they they announced they have seventy five million. They, they have yeah, it's five percent. Um, that that's Apple's platform. You know that that's they're, they're yeah. inching up to every single Mac in use right now. As of today, they've probably already passed the Mac. I mean, sometime in the next yeah. days, they will have more people using Windows 10 than the Mac. I, I mean, that's a, that's a tremendous, tremendous and that's usage, number for right? Them. That's not market share. That's yeah. a usage. That's a tremendous number. And yeah. when you have moved people over like that, you could do so much. But you, the thing that kills me is they have that platform, and I don't mean platform like computing platform. I mean like platform like a like a box, a soapbox you can stand on. You have this opportunity to provide people with these services. And they're going to have a certain number of people who just use OneDrive because it's built in that just, you know, use the Office stuff because it's so easy because you're using Windows and get the apps for free or whatever. Um, they're just get, maybe, maybe they will just use Groove Music. I can't see anyone doing that. Maybe they will just use TV and movies. Maybe they will use Bing Maps. I don't know. Um, the problem is, like, a lot of the stuff they're offering is so lackluster. I think what happens is people upgrade and they're like, well, I was already using Chrome or Firefox. I'm just going to keep using that. I was already using Dropbox. I was already using whatever my calendar email thing is. I'll just keep using that, you know? Yeah. They don't really offer a, a compelling enough argument to do anything other than shift what's underneath everything else, meaning they're going from Windows 7 to Windows 10. I think there are a good arguments to be made there for doing that, depending on the age of your machine, et cetera. But um, this other stuff needs to catch up. This is way off. This is way off uh, script here. I just this is just something that is is painfully obvious on both phone yeah. and PC right now. I I don't know. I don't know what the answer is for them. I, and I think because you're right, yeah, because they're no, attempting so many things at the same time, it, they they sure. it's getting done slowly. For example, um, like the Windows Store that's in Windows 10 is terrible. It's it's just as awful as it's ever been. It's still the same old crap that's always been there. Um, you know, the, the stuff they're promoting today up in the top, you know, graphic part are USA Today, an app that's been around for a long time. Flipboard's been around for a long time. Asphalt 8, which is a game, it's been around for a long time. Minecraft, which has been around for a long time. Granted, the Windows 10 version is new to Windows 10 or whatever, but you, know, you could get Minecraft on Windows 10 very easily. And then there's a Laura Croft go, uh, game, which is one of those um, 3D puzzle type games. It's yeah. not a not an actual Tomb Raider game. It's kind of like this, uh, I think it was a Hitman Go game that came out earlier. So it's kind of, a, it's a mobile game. So that one's actually new, but, you know, whatever. It, so we're not talking about a bunch of fresh, you know, stuff here. Um, Solitaire, Candy Crush Sega, yeah, Netflix, I mean, OneNote, Facebook. 
I, this is stuff that's just kind of, you know, I'm not, there's not a lot of differentiation here. You know, you can buy music, why anyone would do that. I have no idea from Microsoft. Uh, movies, even worse. You know, why anyone, I mean, I guess renting movies doesn't matter where you get those from, but I don't understand what the point of this is. <laughs> like, yeah. and I don't, and, and it's, and I really, what I really don't understand is how you fix it. Yeah. I don't know. How do you make something this lousy better? I, I really don't know. Talking you know, about, don't... talking about lousy, Paul. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, you went, you know how I feel about those smart watches where I'm not crazy mm-hmm. about them. Uh, you actually like the Motorola 360. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Moto 360 watch. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'll get one and review it. We'll yeah. see for sure. But I, I'm curious to see if it's crappy or if it's any good. The one I really want is not available yet. So the, the sport model is the one that has that kind of uh, silicon strap, kind of wicks away sweat. It's water resistant. It has a GPS built in. And it, you can use it, thus you can use it completely standalone from a phone for all kinds of fitness tracking and heart rate and monitoring and so forth. I think that's cool. Um, the, but the ones that are available, second gen, they have versions for men, versions for win, women. The men versions come in two different um, sizes. Uh, and I, you know, I think they're, they're, they're starting to get it right. Yeah. I think the shape and is that's right what I was going to ask you. Are they... Is this the way to go with this? Is a is a circle face the way to go with these you know devices or? Well, yeah. So I, I, we're feeling our way in the darkness here a little bit, but um, I, I don't think there's any right answer until there is one. I guess um, I someone not me had said something like you know shocker you make a watch that looks like a watch and it makes sense you know I don't know when it was a year plus ago. It might have been a Google I.O. last year, maybe. I don't remember. But they showed off like the possibility of round watch faces. And I thought, that makes a lot of sense. We don't think of computer displays as ever being round. But on a watch, that makes sense. It just looks beautiful. And I think the navigation model in Android Wear makes a lot of sense. It's a lot simpler than what Apple did. And um, that those two things combined could make sense. you know. And so the first gen Moto X, it was like, oh, look at that thing. It's really beautiful. But you know, a little big, a little expensive, whatever. Because Samsung uh, also debuted their new gear, the Gear 2. Yeah, but that one's based on Tizen or whatever that thing is called, not Android Wear. And I'm not interested in yet another wearable platform. Yeah. I don't understand why they would do that. And it's very, the, the interface is very um, iOS, you know, uh, app, uh, the, the Apple Watch platform-like, you know, Watch OS yeah. or whatever they're calling it. Well, because there's nothing Samsung can't steal from yeah. Apple. Obviously. I mean, even down to, like, it has the round... You know, the round little... Oh, yeah, yeah, the little bubbles. Yeah, the little bubbles. Stupid UI. Um, That's like, we based our UI on, on chaos theory, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like the Moto Watch, actually. Uh, again, it's still not there for me. You know, none, these devices well, are not there for me to say, okay, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop 500 bucks or 400 bucks on a, on a watch that, that may, I may no longer use in a couple of months or a year. When the new one yep. comes out, uh, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to to p- consider when when buying this thing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know yeah. people that have bought an Apple Watch and they absolutely they they never use it. Right, I'm I'm one of those people. You're one of those, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, you got to um, put it up on your auction site. Yeah, I I have to decide whether or not I'm going to get rid of it um, because obviously. There's some benefit to having it around for testing purposes and compare, you know, Microsoft will put apps on it and they're going to improve it this fall and you can run apps on the device. Does that make any sense? You know, I don't know. But yeah, it's losing value every day. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt Just about that. Just gazelle it and call it a day. I know. You know, um, Apple's, Apple's holding their event next week. Right. Uh, are I you, they don't announce a new Apple Watch. Are, are you you want to put money on it? Do you think we're going to get the, uh, the iPad Pro? Yes, you do. Yes, do. All right, drinks on me. I, this is going to be my. We have guess. another bet too. We have multiple bets happening yeah. for that um, for, for next Wednesday. So no iPad Air three. I think the iPad Air stays where it is. Okay. I think there's a new iPad Mini. Okay. That is basically an iPad Air Mini, and I think we get an iPad Pro. Okay. Uh, Apple TV. Yes or yes. no? Yes. Yep. Hundred fifty uh, bucks. Any new Any new MacBooks? They don't tend to do those at the same time. Um, I don't know. I don't. 
I don't know or care about that. I don't know. What do you think the big one is going to be? The big announcement? It's going to be the Pro? The, the uh, Well, I mean, so, I, okay. So, I mean, the the no shit Sherlock moment is going to be iPhone 6S sure. Plus and 6S. I hope they know. don't announce a thing about the iPhone. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Just, they just put them in the store. You know? Yeah, they just they did like, oh, yeah, oh, by you're going to buy them anyway. Who gives a crap? You know, I don't, yeah, I don't know. So, I, I think, I mean, iPhone's always a big deal. If Apple gets into, and they will, uh, gets into the surface market, essentially, 12-inch screen, keyboard, you know, clickable keyboard, whatever. And they make a beautiful keyboard, by the way. Apple makes a beautiful keyboard. Yeah, yeah, they do. And and actually, I hope what Apple learned from the whole fiasco with, well, not fiasco is not the right word. The whole surface thing was that these cover things... They're okay. They're basic and they work, but you need a real keyboard. Yeah. And I would love to see them put a MacBook style keyboard yeah. on a little slab that you could slap against the thing to close it or whatever. That would be so great. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, reports are coming in that the Apple TV is going to be $149 to $199 or $199. Yep. I think it's going to be $149. You, I do too. I can't see it being 200 bucks. Yeah. That's going to be... A bridge too far for a lot of people. Yeah, considering the fire. I think TV this is a big bet for them. I think this is the big platform shift. This is the thing we've been talking about for years. Apps, uh, eventually a, the service. You know, the subscription service. I mean, um, and if and if it's done right, this really could be uh, the nail in the coffin for a lot of these, especially for Google because they've been getting no momentum in this uh, in this field. They, they've know, they've totally failed with every one of their devices. Attempts. Um, Although, no, it's funny. I still, it's it's probably locked away in a closet right now. I got to get it back. We, you know, I put all the stuff away when we did the home swap. But um, I do have that Google Play Nexus, and the performance is good. It looks good. It it, it, it seems like it's solid. It's just, you know, it's like, <laughs> what's the point? And uh, actually, the I would say that Apple has the chance to run away with this because Apple will always be the only device on which you could potentially do everything, right? Where I could see Google putting their services on an Apple TV, Netflix is on there, Hulu is on yeah. there. Apple's never putting their stuff on Android anything. So, hmm, yeah, I'm trying to actually, think. I'm trying to think what what's on actually, what's actually, not on Amazon. What's not on Amazon? Amazon Fire, yeah, the Fire well, TV. Apple. Apple. Apple's not yeah. on there, but I'm talking about like the networks. You know, like it's great oh. because on my Apple TV, I hadn't used it in a while. It has FX. It has you know Fox. It has Fox Sports. Yeah. I mean, it has like a whole plethora of content to access you don't really get that as much on the fire tv i don't know how it is on google but on the google right. platform but uh, some of that is there on on roku yeah roku's got a little bunch of stuff you can get the google stuff on roku by the you way can. or at least the google video we're on stuff. roku we're on roku yeah. right now on the fire yeah. and people watch you know live i mean i think today people care about the stuff you need at least two of these things and and for most people that means roku plus apple tv yeah uh but I, Apple has a chance to run away with it if they do this thing right. We'll see. Yeah, we're going to find out on Wednesday. Um, what was I going to say to you? There was one more thing I wanted to say to you. <laughs> totally forgot. You totally, totally sensitive forgot. bastard. No, it was something else. Huh. Oh, that's going to mm. bother me. Um, guys, next week we're live on Thursday again because Paul is uh, – they're, they're moving Windows Weekly to Tuesday. We're moving to Thursday. Wednesday we're going to be in the city. So mm. uh, three days of Paul. Yeah. Some of you are going to see Paul for three days. <laughs> Lucky uh, you. Yeah, it's going to be a lot Just of fun. Like my kids. That's about average for the <laughs> Yeah, for the kids. that's about average for, for Paul's kids. Uh, if you want to continue watching, we're going to do our bonus show called What the Talk. We're going to talk about Paul's trip. We're going to talk about some other things. Uh, you can watch it on demand by funding us. Go to patreon.com slash what the tech, and you can fund us anything there, and you get access to this bonus show that we do um, after the show every week. Also, you want to help out the GF Key Network? You want to you want to not give us a dime, but you want to you want to help out in some way? Use our Amazon link, gfq.co/amazon. That's gfq.co/amazon. Bookmark it, and whenever you buy something on Amazon, use that link, and we get a tiny little credit on every sale. Nickels and dimes go a long way for me. Whenever I need to do upgrades here in the studio, that's the only way I'm I'm able to kind of do this at this point. I had to buy a monitor the other day. You know what? Went to Amazon, just use it with the credits. It's perfect. Yeah. Therot.com, all things Paul Therot. Paul's going to be a very busy boy the next couple days. 
You got to write right. about. You're gonna you're gonna cover the Apple stuff, obviously. It's not just Windows stuff. Yeah, you cover, it's gonna you be talk a little about I'll be traveling that day, but yeah. um, I don't know how well, I'm gonna cover that event. That's okay. I don't know how I'm doing. Oh, that. right. Yeah, actually, you're gonna be screwed. I don't yeah, know I, I kind of am. So I may have someone substitute for me and, and yeah, cover yeah. the event because I, you know, I, I do want to come to the to the thing and I got to come early. And uh, what and, time is the Apple event? One o'clock. They never do it on a Wednesday either. So it was a Tuesday. Right. Or, you know, like now, like Wednesday. You could come afterwards. Uh, Yeah, but it's 1 to like 3.30. Yeah. And by be. the time I get there, it's 4.30 and then you're going to be you're leaving. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, everybody's going to be gone. And just some drunk guy at the bar. I'm like, you missed it. Right. It was great. It was the best event ever. <laughs> uh, follow Paul on Twitter at The Rot. You can follow me right. at Andrew Zarian. Uh, and that's it, guys. That's it for this week. Stay tuned. If you're watching live, we got another show coming up. Uh, if you're not, uh, see you next week.